Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Um, in working with primarily the 21 to 34 year old age group uh, with uh, account sizes, the four to, to uh, low five figure account sizes, there's a question that comes up uh, that I've had a few times. Will the currency markets continue to exist such that we can trade them? And that's a really good thought or question to have. Why learn something if in five years or 20 years or whatever, they're going to uh, change it and it's going to be something else? First of all, there's no way to know that. And so you proceed on the, on the best information that you have. The currency markets will continue in existence as long as we don't come up with a universally or world accepted currency that everybody uses. I mean, that was the point of having the euro. Instead of all these different currencies in close proximity to each other, um, trying to do exchange rates and stuff across board, border, <coughs> when you're, you're all right on the borders, <laughs> uh, it does, it, it, why not combine them all into what's called the euro? And so, um, how's that working out? Well, you might have heard of the acronym, the PIGS, uh, Portugal, Italy, Greece, and Spain, who, whose currencies have undergone tremendous stress, a lot of it because of, of economic mismanagement from the um, country standpoint, uh, but also just because of stuff happens. They're not large countries, and so when we have a pandemic or something local to that country occurs, uh, it affects the currency. They have to spend more money than they have, and they get into a lot of trouble. And um, because of the types of government that they have and the lack of trust in that government, it sometimes becomes very difficult in order to manage that currency such that there's not a disaster. So I guess you could ask a question, well, did, did the euro work? Well, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like anything else. It's, you're trying to get not only a group of people uh, to agree on something, but you're trying to get groups of people that think kind of differently in a di bunch of different countries to all think the same way and to agree on that. Now there's the G7 console that tries to bring the seven biggest players in the market together to agree on monetary and fiscal policy. That doesn't work out too good. Um, so the question is, would a country be able, if they didn't have the resources, be able to participate in countries with larger economies effectively? And would they be able to be accepted by those larger company, countries as a peer member with equal decision-making process? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I, you can see the problems that are happening in, in, in Europe. And what about the countries that are competing with each other? Do you think that the Russians or the Chinese would ever agree to come into the Euro? Or, or much less meld their currencies with the U.S. dollar? I don't think so. Currently, the U.S. dollar is what's called the reserve currency. It hasn't, been, it hasn't really been the reserve currency for maybe eight or ten years. It's just nobody's bothered to tell anybody <laughs> about that. It's still used, and the primary reason that it was made the reserve currency is because so many countries had access to dollars, and they were trading oil based on dollars, okay? Uh, that seemed to be a good exchange medium for purchasing and selling oil. And so our strength as a manufacturing um, entity in the world and our economic impact and all that stuff originating out of the end of World War II and moving forward sort of made the um, U.S. dollar the go-to currency. Um, I don't think, and I, it's not me thinking and knowing anything, it's just listening to a lot of different people and sources and having an opinion based on all those different sources that the U.S. dollar will not retain its reserve currency status um, forever, and in fact probably for much longer. What would be the reserve currency? Well, I think it's 
um, probably going to be Chinese currency. Now, everybody will get their shorts tight about all that, but they are a tremendously expanding country with a tremendous impact on the world, as we're seeing today in supply chain management issues, in currency transaction issues, in all sorts of things. Um, they're becoming a military power. They're becoming a, an engineering power. Where do you think the big strides in AI right now are happening? They're not happening in the U.S. They're not happening in India or China. I mean, in uh, Great Britain, they're happening in China. But that's a good thing because um, they are an industrious people, and there is a large population that needs to be taken care of, and you do that by um, expanding your export trade, by having a commanding presence in imports and by having control over your population. And uh, they certainly have control over their population as evidenced in the uh, coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic and now the seceding uh, BA4 variant that's going all over the place right now. Would you want to live under a, a realm like that? Well, probably not, but there's over a billion people that are living like that. Uh, would you want to live under the Indian government? Um, there's over a billion people that are living like that. There's a lot of people that say they wouldn't want to live under the democratic umbrella that the United States has, with all the political turmoil and stuff that we're undergoing right now. Um, those are all economic issues and historical issues, and you can do your own research and stuff, but the concern that you have is if I learn how to trade currencies, is that going to be valid five years from now? Yeah, it will be. They're not going to solve any issues. They're not going to come up with a universal Bitcoin. The different governments aren't going to allow that. Do you think that the U.S. Federal Reserve and Congress is going to allow and abrogate financial control over the United States assets, abrogated out to some digital um, blockchain currency, um, or do you think that they're going to more go to a Fed coin? Great. You're going to do a Fed coin. What's that going to be based on? Um, are you going to get all the different countries to agree to do that? If every other country is going to have a, a, a Fed coin, then you're still going to have a currency to trade, which is going to be among the Fed coins. And the only reason that the U.S. government would want to go to a Fed coin is because they've lost control of the dollar as evidenced by the current inflation, which is being caused by the devaluation of the dollar, which was a result of all the stimulus and all the money that was poured in, $2 trillion worth of money poured into the market in order to try to save the country from the depths of the pandemic, which, in my opinion, went too far like anything. You know, you throw a ball against the wall, and it's gone too far, it's going to come, it's going to bounce back at you. So, um... All these things get resolved. The thing you have to worry about is when the country can't resolve it. And then they hyperinflate their currency, pay off their debts and cheap money, and start over again. That's what the Weimar Republic did in Germany. And, um, I mean, people were being paid twice a day, and they were carrying wheelbarrows full of money to the food store to buy food before it went up because prices were going up you know, 10% a day or something like that. It was, it was just, it was crazy. And so somebody over there, I don't know who it was, I forget the name, just said, that's it. We're producing this new one euro or Deutschmark or whatever they called it. I forget what they called it. And that represents um, 500 million of these current dollars that are out there, Deutschmarks. And they said, that's just the way it is. And that's how those things get solved. Or you go into war, and uh, the war machine needs to pump money in, and that provides employment, provides manufacturing, everything becomes consolidated under uh, the country's bounds because you can't abrogate your war materials production on somebody else. We're sort of in that issue with the United States and a lot of other countries too. 
the United States is, is hurting right now because of oil dependency. Uh, we're not the number one producer in the world. Russia and, 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 uh, and the um, Saudi Arabian uh, countries uh, have as much, if not more, oil than we do. Combined, certainly, between the two of them, they certainly uh, outdo us. And raw minerals, uh, they, they outdo us. Maybe um, uh, Russia will say, well, we're going to peg the ruble against, uh, I don't know, platinum if they had a gazillion amount of that and nobody else had a lot of it. There's all kinds of crazy things that the countries can do. As currency traders, um, the good thing is I don't think they're going to, I don't think the currency market will be, be untradeable. The rules for trading in it may become a little different. Your margin may go up, your liquidity, I mean, your uh, um, your leverage uh, may be increased, um, as the United States did. You know, you guys out there, your margin is the same as your leverage. You'd go into 100 or 200 to 1, boom, and you're done. $1,500, you can, you can put up 10 lots, 10 full lots. Um, in the United States, we just said, well, that's, you know, that's really a bad idea because that's just gambling and not investing in the exchange of currencies. And so we're going to put a 5% of the currency value margin requirement, and we're going to limit your leverage to 50 to 1. And I think that's all a good thing because there's too many jackasses that are doing currencies. And now, well, they're leaving currencies to go do Bitcoin because you don't have the regulation on the Bitcoin at all, and they think that's the answer. Good luck to that. Bitcoin goes from 20000 to 60000 back to 18000 and now it's 30000 If you want to trade in that environment, that's, you know, that's fine. And there's no basis of value for that currency. And so, and it's not a currency. It's, I don't know what it is. Maybe someday it will be. And... Maybe someday um, all countries may have their own currency, but all exchanges and stuff will be on the blockchain. That's probably a more likely scenario than me having a bank and I gotta I gotta change my dollars for euros to to, to buy stuff over in, in Europe, for example. But from a trading standpoint, entity, even if things change to the point where the currency market is Un unreachable or untradeable for whatever reason, by learning how to trade in a market like the currency market, you can trade anything. You can trade oil, you can trade old tires, you can trade, you can trade anything. Look, I come out of 40 years of real estate investment. I was at one point for three years, my stockbrokers, most, one of the most active options traders, um, or clients um, for a while. I made, I lost a lot of money uh, um, uh, uh, options trading. I made a lot of money back and I lost double that amount of money, not double, but I lost it all. Um, again, did some computer research on that, understood the reasons why it wasn't going to work and uh, went on to other things, focused on my real estate. But um, the um, methodologies that I used in learning real estate, although they bit me in the ass and I lost a lot of money because I, they're not directly transferable, once I figured out what the key difference was between the real estate trading and the currency trading, I was able to adopt a, the currency trading. And my feeling at this point, after 40 years in currency, I mean in um, real estate, and this is 2022. I've been studying the currency market since 2007, so I didn't just fall off the truck with this stuff. Um, is that the currency market, the ability to trade the currency markets today and probably for the foreseeable future, will enable you to have the skills to trade anything else, any other vehicle that you want to trade, futures, T-bills, uh, Bitcoin, anything because it has all the characteristics necessary for a tradable asset with tremendous liquidity and all the rest of the stuff, the, all the rules that you have to learn in order to successfully trade currencies are inherent within all other vehicles. And I've studied commodities, I've written computer simulations against commodities and futures, 
uh, options, stocks, bonds, I don't believe in bonds, um, cars, it, it, you know, it just doesn't make any difference. I mean, my, my, my son's an auto mechanic, and he used to, when he had time, he'd buy uh, some wrecked car or an old car, fix it up, flip it around, make a bunch of money, buy another car and flip it around and make it some money. Um, and I looked at what he was doing, and I could do that. I mean, I don't know enough about the cars, but I know enough about trading so that with a minimal amount of education in cars, I could trade cars. It's the currency, and I couldn't do that with my real estate background because I never bought a car. Um, I never trusted myself to buy cars. I always had my son say, oh yeah, this is the car you want, this is what you want to do, that's what you want to do. You know, oh, well, I hate cars to start with, so that's why I don't have a Lamborghini. I don't like I don't have any use for them. They get me from here to the store to get a loaf of bread and, or to the movies or down to the seashore or up the mountains or whatever. That, that, that's all I need a car for. So I don't need to impress anybody. I'd rather have my money working for me in the currency market than devaluing as a uh, uh, high-end Mercedes or Audi uh, driving around the streets where some asshole is just going to run into it and scrape it up. And then I get all cranked about that. Will you always be able to trade the currency market? I don't know. I suspect for as long as you're going to live, you will. But if you can't, you will easily be able to take the skills. If you're taught those skills correctly, and I know what I'm talking about here, if you know how to use those skills correctly, you'll understand how to map them into trading oil or gold, uh, other precious metals, whatever. And there'll always be a trading market because there's always going to be people that disagree on the value of what something is and where that value is going to go. And that's the key to trading, whether it's real estate, old tires, bonds, currencies. Doesn't make any difference. Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Have a great day and have a great trading day.